Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker is now just 94 days away from its official release by writer and director J.J. Abrams and Chris Terrio, as well as creator George Lucas. This is Mike Zero, make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel for future Star Wars content. Now what's truly exciting about Episode 9 is that we do know that the character of Rey is going to be explored in multiple different ways in this story by J.J. and exactly what he wants to do with this character in order to evolve her from start to finish of the plot of this movie and how she's going to be connected to many of the legacy characters in some way, shape, or form in Episode 9. And that's the great thing about this movie is that there will be a lot of connections to the prequels and the originals that will benefit the characters of Kylo Ren and Rey. Now these past couple of weeks or so we've been learning a whole lot more about this movie and when it all comes down to one of the concept art descriptions, this is where things begin to get very intense for Episode 9. Now specifically, a description of one of the sequences that is said to take place during Rey's duel against Kylo Ren on board of the Death Star 2, in the middle of the ocean where it's explained that Kylo Ren angers Rey by telling her a terrible truth about her parents. Now it's said that Rey begins to enter a phase of rage, where she begins to use her hate as fuel to combat against Kylo Ren on board of the Death Star. Now, it's said that the thunderstorm and lightning in the background is used as a visual outward manifestation of Rey's rage that is stirring within her. It's explained that as this happens, while she uses the Skywalker saber, she begins to hear the voice of Anakin Skywalker reaching out to her, where she is said to pull her lightsaber away from darkness and away from Kylo Ren to save her from making a terrible mistake. Rey is said to listen to Luke's father where she begins to question what she just went through and how she nearly killed Kylo Ren. Earlier on in the film, there is said to be another sequence where Rey sees the first vision of her darker self as Dark Rey by touching a relic that once belonged to Palpatine where she sees herself as a Sith and begins to engage in the vision where Anakin's presence also takes her out of the darkness. So let's go over a couple of parts about this. Now, in case you guys did not know, we do know that the Skywalker bloodline is going to have a big presence in this movie in many different ways that's going to either help Rey or benefit Rey in certain ways in the second and third acts of Episode 9. So what I like so much about this is that this is mimicking of what Luke Skywalker went through in Return of the Jedi. You guys may recall that in Return of the Jedi, it is indeed official that Luke went through a stage of the dark side, a phase of darkness, if you will, to take down his father Darth Vader on the Death Star 2. And what do you know, we have a very similar experience here once again happening on board of the Death Star 2, where Rey also taps into the dark side to attempt to strike down Kylo Ren and she almost nearly kills him and brings him to his death just before Anakin Skywalker's presence begins to tap into Rey's mind. His force goes to voice, if you will, and guides her away from the darkness and brings her back to the light. Now, there's also said to be another sequence where she sees a darker vision of herself that is said to be her as a Sith Lord after she touches a device that once belonged to Palpatine. Now, this most likely is the Wayfinder device. In case you guys did not know, there are going to be two devices in this movie, one Wayfinder that belongs to Kylo Ren and another that belongs to Rey, one of which belongs to Vader, which Kylo owns, the other one of which belongs to Palpatine, that of course Rey owns. Now you can really see the parallels here, if Rey is indeed the granddaughter of Palpatine, she owns a relic that once belonged to her grandfather, where Kylo Ren is indeed the grandson of Darth Vader, where he owns a relic that once belonged to his grandfather. So you can see all the tones that they are setting up for this movie that's starting to make a lot more sense now. Now what I like so much about Anakin is that he really is the core of the Skywalker saga. I think that there's no denying that, that he really is the true face of the Star Wars franchise who ultimately becomes Darth Vader and was brought into the Jedi Order by, of course, Qui-Gon Jinn. And that's what I love so much about this, is that you can really see how Episode 9 is tying everything together and how Anakin really is not only a big help to the Skywalker saga and how things play out, but it's also about Rey and Kylo and their journey and how they're going to take down this greater evil, that of course being Darth Sidious slash Emperor Palpatine in Episode 9. So with that being said guys, like I say, we are now just a little over three months until release. We're getting closer with each and every day that passes and we're learning more about this film. We're going to get that new trailer by the way just next month in October. They're aiming for a October 14th release. 
followed by a series of TV spots that's actually going to drop throughout the month of November. So, like I say, this seems like a very intriguing moment, a big moment that parallels that of Return of the Jedi, where Luke taps into the dark side, now Rey taps into the dark side, and almost kills Kylo Ren. This could also line directly up with, with how, you know, she heard a voice talking to her in The Force Awakens, telling her to kill Kylo Ren from reading the novelization of that movie. So anyways guys, drop a comment below, let me know what you think about all of this in the comments, and if you guys did enjoy the content for today, do make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time.